I gotta get that energy up. Woo woo. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise I will go back to sleeping on the couch. Yeah, today's a sleepy day for us. <laughs> Today is definitely a sleepy day. <laughs> today's like I have a lot of work to do. Today's Astrid's birthday, but I'm not gonna tell you the date, you astrology b Yeah. <laughs> You're just gonna have to guess. You're gonna have to guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is the first bit of sun we've had in Sacramento quite some time, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is good. Yeah. Lindsay is getting into gardening, which is good because I am too. Oh my god. I woke up and cleaned like part of the garden. Hell yeah, dude. It's all the leaves fell and the storm happened and I was like, I'm not going out there to clean the storm. No, definitely not in the storm. I wanted to clean in the storm over the weekend, but right. then I was like, no, I shouldn't. And then I got sick anyway and it was dumb and I like was lost like three days of work. Very upset. I bought these solar panels mm -hmm. so I can charge all my stuff, you know what I mean? And yeah, it worked, yeah, yeah. but then as soon as I got the solar panels, it rained for like a week straight. <laughs> and I was like, cool. It's okay. It's a benefit in the long run. You know, Sacramento is only going to get sunnier and sunnier as climate change ruins it's our... It's going to get hotter and hotter. It's going to get hotter and hotter. If we could find a way to make energy out of just normal heat, you know mm. what I mean? Not like, theo uh, not like a geothermal heat. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, just like, I want something on my body that near my armpits that makes <laughs> energy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to be able to to get energy off of my body heat. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. You know what's funny, this entire week since it has been so freaking cold, Cody's all, all been like, Lindsay, why are your feet and your hands so cold? And it's because my body prioritizes the ute. Yeah. It just wants it wants to save the little baby making machine. Just be like, bro, I weigh 110. Ease off. Like, yeah. there's a person at my work who's just like, I need, I need a boyfriend. And I was like, Oh, are you like lonely or whatever? She's like, No, it's just cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, That's what oh we are God. to you. She's like, Yeah. This is a, this is space heater. She's yeah. like, If I had you, I'd just never be cold. You weigh like two something, right? And I was like, Yeah, but like, could also just eat pancakes. Mm. A lot of pancakes. Oh, I want pancakes. If you didn't have to go right after this, I'm definitely in the mood where I'm like, let's do something other than work. Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of in that mood too, not gonna lie. Yeah. Not going to caperoni, but I would like some macaroni right now. I don't know what you're saying. I would like macaroni and cheese, not gonna oh, lie. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah. I wish we could get macaroni and cheese. What are we talking about? Today? All right, so today, what are we uh, talking about the today? mud peddlers. That was a longer intro than normal, but it's, it's kind of fun. Hopefully, it's good. people enjoy it. That was the intro. Are we doing intros now? Like that, and then. The Mud Peddlers, a podcast where two nerdy ceramic artists share the behind the scenes of their worlds of clay. We're your hosts, Lindsay M. Dillon. And I am Dante of Earth Nation. Welcome to The Mud Peddlers! Oh my god, we really should re-record our intro because that's from like before we had ever released an episode. That'll be that'll be for our like three years the mud peddlers. We'll we'll redo yeah. our intro. I try and do redo the thing like once every three years. Yeah, two years. I think yeah. that's good. Alright, so today we are doing part two of creating a body of work. So since last time we talked a little bit more about like the technical side of that, like mostly focusing on how to create consistency in your shapes. Uh, this week we're talking a little bit more about about the kind of big brain ideas behind creating a body of work. I have a couple different things, a couple different points I want to I want to hit on, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious like cuz essentially like how we were talking about this before we turn on the recorder right. is that like this this section is kind of like creating your own personal brand through creating a series. Yeah. So like like for someone who isn't sure about their brand, mm -hmm. why do you think that creating a series can help them explore their brand not just creating one mug but creating like trying to create a family a series like just this is just the way i am personally mm -hmm. this is not for every teacher this is just for me for beginner shapes what you do is you learn all the shapes and intermediate you learn how to play with those shapes mm -hmm. once you get into the advanced or like a little more than advanced right like i call it adept it's not a real phase i just named it that <laughs> it's where you start learning how to express yourself through your shapes as the artist. And every bit of control or consistency is a facet of that expression. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why I'm so, I wouldn't say against, but I'm not I'm not a fan of uh, hyper-focused tools. Oh, yeah, yeah, Is yeah. because the more control I have, the more ability I have to express myself in the higher tiers of ceramic artwork. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I think it's important to be able to create a consistent body of work that expresses you as the artist. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's purely important, not only for the consistency of your work so that you can improve upon your work, mm -hmm. because if you're bouncing everywhere, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You're, it's, yeah. I'm not saying you have to stay in your lane. I'm just saying that if you if you have a certain way of expressing yourself through your work, you should try and improve that expression through time, and that becomes a standard for you and your work after a while, and then you can move on. But like. If you're bouncing up and down everywhere, you're never going to master that one form of expression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? What, what, that kind of actually reminds me of, it reminds me of this, this piece of advice that my, uh, one of my ceramics mentors gave to me a while back. And he was talking about it in terms of the context of like getting your uh, bachelor's degree versus getting your master's degree or your MFA. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the concept of like going wide versus going deep. So like what you're talking about, like that bouncing around, that to me is like the whole like going wide thing. It's, it's when you're still relatively new to the medium of clay mm -hmm. and you're just like, how does this thing work? Like, how do I make a cylinder versus a bowl versus kind of like the playing with yeah. the, playing with the shapes. And then going deep is kind of like, okay, like I think you can go deep even if you're still a beginner on something. Of course. But it's more like hyper-focusing on one specific technique like and, I yeah. like I think going deep on say like scraffito yes. because you know again like we, we've all I think we all or at least if you have if you've got if you're dipped your if you've dipped your toes into the world of clay you've probably seen some scraffito techniques right if you've carved through <laughs> under glaze yeah you've done, you've done sc scraffito but there's yeah. some people out there who are really good at it yeah yeah and there's also different ways that you can like layer layer those techniques so you do yeah. scraffito but you also do like I don't know, like wax resist or something like that, you know? So it's like, yeah. I think the benefit of going deep and going <laughs> going deep in a series or going deep by creating a series yes. is it helps you go past that initial, like that initial first look. Because like, I don't know, like, I'm not explaining myself well today. No, it's fine. But, like, I, I get the vibe yeah, you're trying yeah, to put yeah, out yeah. there. And yeah. I, I think it's just, I think for me, if I were to, to give it another term, it's just funneling where it's like, okay, you know how to make a bunch of cups, and that's cool, you're exploring that. But like, the amount of us who just like put a glaze on top of another glaze to make like drippy glazes, mm -hmm. I wish that was more of a funnel. I wish that was more of like, I get that's a form of expression, I get that plenty of us go through that, um, I don't want to call it a phase, but eh. It's, so, well, it's, it's, it's a bit of a phase. Well, it's also something, I don't know, that, I don't know, I don't know that it's fair to call it like a phase because that feels dismissive. It's like swirly mugs, like we all know how to do it. <laughs> They're not, you know, I'm not like, gonna say they're they're not cool, they're not special. I'm just yeah. saying like, it, I got into a classroom and I was like, oh, so everybody can do this in the advanced class. They're like, yeah, we, we all went through the swirly mug phase. Yeah, they're like, yeah. Yeah, okay, all right, I mean, yeah, yeah I, feel it. I feel it. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm saying it's probably a step of progression that is more wide than it is deep because many of us explore that sooner or later. Yeah. But like, if you've seen old Forge's swirls there, <laughs> Deep, <laughs> uh, like he uh, understands how to do them, and that's that's part of his brand. When you see a swirly mug, people think Old Forge. Man. You know, when you see that serrated, you know what I'm talking about? That slip cast serrated form that uh, what's his name? Hammerly does. Oh yeah, yeah. When people see that, they think Hammerly. Yeah, that's true. That's someone who went wide and all of a sudden said, "Okay, I really like this form. I'm going to keep expressing myself through this one thing." Mm -hmm. And now he's known for that. It and is now went, part of his brand. And he went deep. And he went deep. He went deep. And that is now part. And he went so deep, he has a slip cast shape for that one thing. Mm -hmm. That's the shape he makes. That's how much he likes it. That's how he expresses himself. Yeah. And that's what we know him for now. And that's part of his profile of work. Yeah. That's part of the branding, mm -hmm. right? But most people who go wide, they just make a mug. And then they try to siphon down that mug and go deep into how they express themselves through that funnel or that siphon. Right? Yeah. And that's, those are just a couple examples of people who have done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> versus, like for me, I'm doing gla a lot of glaze chemistry right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's my form of deep, where mm -hmm. it's like, I no longer care about, not company glazes, but like when I see them, I'm like, I can make that. <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah. I can probably make that better. Yeah. You know, but my deep form is like, I want to make phase separation glazes that have multiple layers of texture that mm. do this and this clay body. And that for me, I think is part of my deep brand. Yeah. Where if people yeah. see like my Angemon, my Greymon glaze, they're like, oh, Dante made that. Mm. This this cup is in this color that Dante developed. Yeah. And I like those, that. That's a form of expression for me. Those are Digimon, right? Yes, they are. Bless. I love yeah. that so Look, much. Look, listen. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Listen. I'm going to start an argument right now. <laughs> I'm going to start arguing.
Digimon is a better anime than Pokemon, even though, all around, even though it didn't do a very good job of advertising mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. If you watch the Digimon anime, there was stakes, there was death, uh -huh. there was crying, the people aged in Digimon, every oh, generation yeah. passed on to the next Digimon and things like that, and they, were, they grew with them, they talked to them. This, I'm tired of Ash Ketchum trying to riz up Misty for the next 16 seasons. <laughs> With a rat Pokemon. Uh, it's a mouse Pokemon, don't it? It's not a rat. It's a rat now. <laughs> it's a yellow rat, and I hate it. <laughs> I have a hate for Pokemon. Oh man, we're about to get so much hate mail. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so it's like Star Trek versus Star Wars. I don't hate Star Wars, I just think Star Trek is better because Star Wars is just opera with swords. It is very space opera. It's like yeah. literally a space opera. It's opera with light up swords yeah. and like telekinesis. Yeah. But if you took out one of those, if you took out one of those facets, you would drop most of the player base, most of the fan base. I think mm. we're off topic. I'm yeah, we're off. Topic. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. We'll have, we'll save that for a Night Peddlers episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, one of the areas that I think I've gone deep in, like I don't know, like I think I've gone deep with a couple different shapes. Like I think I really have narrowed down my like Stein shapes. Yeah. Um, because again, like I was going through old old storage and like trying to clear out some inventory mm -hmm. and uh, I found a mug that I, or a stein that I made even like a year, like a little over a year ago. And I was yeah. like, dang, like I've still, like I've improved since yeah, then. Yeah. Like I've gotten more steiny, I've gotten more steiny and I, and I love that. But yeah, but with like glazes, I'm still very like wide, I would say yeah. in that sense where I don't, you know, mo like where I spend my time is mostly on developing new designs, like yes. and de developing the concepts behind them. And that's something you've chosen to express yourself through. Yeah. As for yeah. me, I've chosen glazes, and that, right. that's a perfect example. But like, mm -hmm. we both know how to make glazes. Yeah. We can both do design. Well, you're a little better at design than I. For your <laughs> sure better. I can't draw. <laughs> But we chose different paths and now we're going deep into one thing and that sooner or later becomes part of the profile of your work and how people know you express yourself. Yeah. And the people I named earlier, such as Hammerly or Old Forge, those are people who you can very clearly see have decided to whittle their work down into like, okay, this is the standard of how I express myself. Yeah. Yeah. Granted, I don't really know them like that. <laughs> like, you know, so they could like, they could be like me where I just make cups and bowls to sell and in their garage they have super, super... Like I have, they, they I have work that y'all have not seen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Ham, like, well, Hammerly always. Sometimes he'll like bring out pieces that are like, you know, very different. Like he still seems to make time for exploring. It's just he's he's exploring within a certain world, and I feel like that's the kind of main thing that we're like, like, because you're always exploring, you're always learning things. It's just like yeah. a, across how many different disciplines are you learning yeah. and exploring the things. Yeah, for me it's, uh, for me I'm like, I'm about to stop glaze chemistry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just like, mm, I think I'm good. I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to become an actual scientist. <laughs> if I go any further, I'm going to become an actual chemist and I don't, I don't how, think I feel like doing that. How, how far are you through, uh, Matt Katz videos? Uh, or Matt Rose Katz videos? I'm, I'm, seven eighths through the intermediate the advancing glazes oh my lord because there's like there's like the beginners of the intermediate glazes and there's yeah. the advancing glazes uh -huh. the crazy thing is that the way his classes work is that he goes from beginner to advanced as if you've never made a glaze before oh, okay yeah. but if you know how to make your own glazes and you have enough experience and you kind of know a little bit about glazes mm -hmm. a lot of the beginner information is very scientific and a lot of the advanced stuff is very like, oh, if you've never made a glaze before, you might not know this. This happens when this happens and this, and here's the combination of tin and chrome. So mm. it's weird watching all the advanced, advancing glazes stuff. I'm like, yeah. I knew that. Why are you telling me that? But I didn't oh. know half of the beginner stuff. Oh, interesting. All of the beginner stuff is chemistry. And I'm like, I didn't know about, about silica ratios and aluminum ratios. Like, yeah. I had no idea about the stoll chart, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. like nobody told me. And the next packet of classes that I have of his that I haven't watched yet is the clay bodies one mm. and i think that's just gonna be how like glazes interact with clay bodies interesting but of course all i know is like there's porcelain there's, <laughs> there's stoneware and then there's red there's brown clay earthenware there's earth yeah well yeah and then there's like usually if i put a glaze on a white clay body or porcelain it comes out as pure as it can but like i just pretend there's a little more iron in there if i put it on a red clay body <laughs> and that's how the glaze will probably come out End of story. Yeah. I don't deal with any other clays other than that. Dude. And I, I know someone's listening to this right now. Like, that's not the end of it. Don't oh, I'm sure. That I'm is, sure. That is, that's barely the pinky. That's barely the first that's little overhanging nail on the pinky toe the of The tip of the willy. Yeah. You know, oh, As no. people with the free willy. Oh. Not like that kind of willy. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so for those for those of our listeners who are you know less established in what they're doing you know kind of more on, like not necessarily beginners but for for folks who maybe who have never done a series before there's a couple like approaches that i want to suggest for how you can approach doing a a series here's your homework here's your homework, here's your homework. <laughs> you're getting homework early okay so there's three main sort of ways that I think you can go about making a, a, a series, a body of work. Mm -hmm. The first one is by focusing on the formal qualities. And I would say that has to do with shape, with with size, like that's kind of more to do like what we were talking about with the last episode. Like, okay, I wanna make a series of five mugs that all ha are under five inches tall and have you know a big round that are like round shaped like a belly mug like a belly and those are just the basics shape, yeah shape we're talking yeah, about yeah yeah but, yeah but but i mean like that's you know that that is challenging if you are still new to ceramics for sure yeah yeah so that has to so that's the first one is like focusing on the formal qualities of the mug itself mm -hmm. after that is focusing on like a technique or a process so like we were talking about you know okay i want to make a series of mugs and this it doesn't matter if all if they're all the same shape or size but they're all going to have you know, they're all going to have a similar sgraffito design mm -hmm. or they're all going to be carved and they're all going to be so it's like picking a specific process and then pushing it as far as you can within that particular series yes yeah, see so, how far you can go with it yeah sure. and like there's a concept that i think a I don't know, is fairly well known within like the idea of creating designs is that you, whenever you're thinking about a design that you want to do, mm -hmm. come up with at least like five or six different options mm -hmm. because the first couple are most likely going to be the kind of things that you like, we're all kind of used to seeing, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, but the further you push it, the more you that piece is going to be because you're going yeah. past the initial like ideas and i think for those who may not know like okay all right Lindsay, you're saying push it how do you push it right for me my favorite thing is to have combinations oh, so yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay so you want to do scraffito what if you did sci-fi mushroom scraffito mushrooms Mushrooms. That's the first thing they come up with. Hey, you know what? Mushrooms, mushrooms. mushrooms are in vogue right now. So they I'm are. suggesting... Just mushroom but, girls on Instagram. I don't understand right. them. It's a thing. It's a thing. But have you seen sci-fi mushrooms? Like, what would a sci-fi mushroom look like? Would it be like vaguely, you know, cyberpunk-esque? What would that look like? So it's like, yeah. so if you're trying to push... It's a metal mushroom. Right? Like, yeah. yeah. So it's like, if you're... And, and that kind of moves a little bit into this next, like idea this third idea so we have formal qualities we have technique and process and then we have like a con the, the concepts behind a piece so what if this um, i'm going off of this uh, sci-fi mushroom uh thing now god oh. <laughs> and they sexualize them too it's weird on oh, oh i'm sure so i'm half sure naked mushrooms and i'm like who came up with this well i mean Who's this horny for vegetables you know what people have been horny for vegetables all throughout history. I get, look, I get cucumbers. I yeah. understand cucumbers. But mushrooms, they're but like, mushrooms? they're like little fey people. And little fey people have a history of being like, oh, they steal you away and ho, ho, ho. They're ho. mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So what if for this sci-fi mushroom series, you didn't necessarily come up with a sci-fi mushroom series first, but you were like, okay, I want to make a series of mugs that focuses on our relationship with nature. And then you, through that process, you could end up with sci-fi mushrooms, right? Yeah, you go outside, pick up some leaves and print them into your work and then, you know, be nice. Yeah. Have a little, have a little nature in your work. Yeah. And then sooner or later, you, you, you know, that's the broad and then you get real good at that. You're real good at that. <laughs> you start picking up roses and then you get, you get a roller. You get a roller and you start, oh, this is better for compressing. Yeah. <laughs> and now, and now I, can put, oh, I can put glaze, I can put underglaze in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and then, and then I can put a different color on the outside of the glaze and the underglaze. Ooh, I can make it clear. It's gonna be, yes. oh my God. And then you have a whole line of cups and bowls with little dandelions on mm. them and hippie girls who go to Coachella <laughs> will buy them <laughs> and be like, ooh, look how nature I am. While they have their $700 iPhone in oh their hand. Oh my God. There's some artisanal <laughs> dweller. You don't criticize some... society and yet you are a part of society. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, Starbucks. I know. <laughs> it's okay. I hear you. And I feel like, again, that's why I'm, I'm suggesting 
combining things because yeah. because again it's like yes there are like there are fads with things right like there, yeah, there's course. fads with mushrooms there's fads with crystals not to say there's anything wrong with that by any means but it's more no, it's, just, it's just the passing time yeah okay. yeah and wrong with it. and there are ways that you can again like we've talked about before you can like it's not copying somebody else's work if you are like taking an aspect of what they do and then combining it with something else that you do as I, well. I want to tell you the deepest I ever heard in my life. <laughs> okay, The tell deepest me. business thing I ever heard in my life from Lord Drake. Some of you might just know him as Drake, though. So yeah, <laughs> I, I call him by his first name, Lord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you said it's not about who did it first. It's about who did it better. And that's like, that's kind of true. That's kind of true. If you are competing with someone online who is doing the same thing as you and they're mid at it and you're really good at it and you can market yourself all pretty well, guess who's getting guess who's getting the quality product. Yeah. I'm buying it from you. I'm not buying it from the other guy. Yeah. Who just and now admittedly, obviously, don't full on copy exactly what they're doing. Cause even yeah, if you no. can copy what they're doing and do it better, that's still like Yeah, bestie. that's a that's a bit of stealing to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But like also it's you know what I mean? Like like there's the, there's a difference in quality and usually the quality product wins. You know what I mean? Like, there's a bunch of TVs out there, but you're looking mm. up reviews about which one is made better <laughs> to buy, for yeah. sure. If you ever buy a TV, mm -hmm. shoes the same way, cars the same way, Honda's enough to be reliable. For businesses, it's just marketing and who did it better, because everyone has the same idea, and there's no such thing as an original idea. Uh, yeah. There's no such... I want you to look, look at me. When you <laughs> there's no such thing as an original idea, and piggybacking off of that, it's not about who did it first, it's about who did it better. Mm, yeah. Uh, on God, no cap. <laughs> <laughs> no cap, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I You stole my idea. No. Mm. Somebody some someone had the idea first. I'm just better at it. I think I kinda I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Like it's it's yeah. I'll come over there and Oh my god, right. Dante! Dante! <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. Sorry. <laughs> I drop the mask sometimes, my bad. No, you're good, you're good. I'm here for it. I just have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll we'll just put in a long bleep, like yeah. that one time. No, we did that one long bleep and yeah. Ryan Durbin messaged me and he's like, what'd you say? And I was like, don't worry about it. And he's like, I want to know so oh bad. Oh my god. Oh, excellent. He's like, it was hilarious. And I was like, good. I'm oh, like, good. I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad you glad. liked it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was. I like that Ryan listens to our podcast. I like that too. It makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I feel like there's more things that I want to say, but I'm a little brain dead right now and I'm uh, trying want, to figure out. You want to carry a little bit? No, I mean, I think, I think it's like I want to, like I want to give people a little bit more tangible examples or tangible, I don't know, or maybe maybe like ideas for how they could go about creating a series. I think the main goal for a person who's trying to express themselves to make a profile of work in order to create, as you would call like a series, yeah. is to pick something that you know how to do. Like mm -hmm. we all know how to make bowls and cups and X, Y, Z and X, Y, Z, right? Yeah. Plates and whatnot. Although admittedly, like the, our listeners may not. Oh. Like, Okay, so whatever you know how to do, yeah. right? But as, as potters, like, we have a certain set of skills that we learned or were taught in class or were taught by someone on the internet, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And you take that and you try to just make it as yours as possible. I don't really care what you like. You could like robots. I don't care if you like robots. You could like flowers. You could like th this game called Destiny 2. It's really good, by the way. <laughs> um, and you just try and incorporate some ideas from your everyday life because realistically as a person you are affected by your environment but you're gonna mm. that's gonna leak into your work and you might as well just go full force you might as well you, you like cats mm-hmm make some cat cups yeah go ahead do it sell them on etsy yeah that hurt me so much to say oh dante you're growing that hurt me so you're much accepting to say. them oh. i love it no i, love I don't it. accept them they're they're <laughs> they're the leeches i say oh my god they're leeches I hella made a cat cup earlier this year, so, you know. But I think, like... They're like, oh, I can make the tail of a handle. Yeah, you and everyone else who has that idea. Oh, my God. There's God nothing dude. wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I guess. Yeah. To me, that that feels like an... Okay, like, so it, let's go with the let's go with the cat mug idea, right? So if you were... <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. We're, we're I on brought this, it on myself. We're really. on this train now. Oh, my God. So... The one in Ohio? Oh, hopefully not. Not that not one. Not that one. Well, mm. That's why we're going to Ohio, actually. We're going to fix that problem. Oh, yeah, of course. Conspiracy theory. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, if you are making a, like, a cat mug, right? Or, like, you want to figure out how to, how to incorporate cats 
into your work, right? Yes, perfect. In my mind, there's a few different ways that you can go about doing that. Yes. You could do, you could, you could approach it from a more illustrative perspective where you are using the surface. My cat literally just ran by. Oh my God. Anyway, you can approach it from a more illustrative perspective where you're using the surface of the mug or I will just, I'm just going to go with a mug for the sake of the yeah, example. Mugs are easy. Yeah. 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 The t-shirt of Clay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Where you can create a scene based on the idea of cats. Like you could have multiple cats. You could create a, a, a narrative uh, along the... Of course you uh, narrative. Of course it's narrative. I mean, yeah. just the, I'm, I'm going to just list a few different examples. Yeah, go, please. I, yeah. Okay. So you could, you could make a narrative. Like you could have, you could create a scene almost like it's an, like an illustrated book on the outside of your cup. So you could, you could have a cat in maybe four different panels along the mug, almost like a comic book, right? So that's like, that's like one approach where you have the illustrative and you're making it like a narrative. You could also have illustrative and then make it more about the different forms that are on the cup. Like, so you could have an illustration, but instead of it being a narrative going around and it's like a scene, you could have cat butts because everybody loves cat butts now. Do they? So yeah, 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 they do. do. They? Yeah. What's so, up with you guys looking at yeah. buttholes on cat mugs, huh? It's, it's just a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> get help. <laughs> no, don't get help. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. So, so you could, again, using a, using scraffito, using mm -hmm. underglaze, using, you know, there's again, many different approaches. You could create a sprig mold and then attach, like do a little mini sculpture of the cat mug and attach it. Well, that, that kind of gets more into like the sculptural realm more than the illustrative. Yeah. So that's within the more illustrative style. Then there's two different ways you could approach it. So mm -hmm. that's just with illustration. You could also approach it from a more sculptural perspective where you're using the mug as a stand-in for the body of the cat. And that's where you see the kind of thing where it's like the handle is the tail and there's a little X where the cat butt is and the paws are the little feet. Um, you could definitely do that little anthropomorphic kind of. Yeah, you could, yeah, you yeah. Could. For, me it's, for me, it's more, if, if I were to give advice, it would be to pick that path. Let's continue with the cat mug, right? Yeah. You pick that path. And then you start off with, okay, you made a regular old Walmart looking mug. It's just a cylinder with a handle on it, right? And then you drew whiskers and a nose and some cat eyes on there. Mm -hmm. I could tell it's a cat from that point. Yeah. Right? That's fine. But then you get a stamp and you start stamping little paws on there. Yeah. You're getting a little better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you go, well, some people said it looks like a dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you start like putting ears on the side, start sculpting ears. And then you're mm -hmm. like, okay, well now it's cat ears. They know it's a cat. Yeah. And then you start getting a texture tool and you start putting slip on your mug mm -hmm. and you start running through it and scraffitoing it. It's a black cat with white, uh, with a white clay body. So now as you carve through, you now have the texture for the hair. Yeah. You get better and better and better and better. And you start coming up with more ideas and you start applying more of the tools that are on your belt to express yourself in the art that you wanted to make even more. Yes. That's yes. for me. That's how I think about it. Where it's like you start off with the basic and you got so exact that you became really good at expressing what you thought was your artistic style through this one thing. And now it looks mm -hmm. like a cat. It's yeah. not very functional. It has ears. It's going to poke the eye. <laughs> but <laughs> I saw this cat mug once. It had ears on the very top of the... Yeah, and I've, like, I've seen those. When you tilt it, it's going to stab you in the eye. It's going to stab you in the eye. It's the perfect representation of cats. But you know, there are someone's yeah. just like, oh, it's a cat. Oh my, he's so oh, judgy. Oh my God. So judgy, Dante. I want oh my God. Jumble is my life. I can't even handle you, Dante. That's can't what they, even how they you. sound. It's not my fault. <laughs> I'm just given the correct depiction of the straw man. Oh my god! It's not even the correct depiction it's of the, the straw man. Oh my god! <laughs> That's an oxymoron right there. Uh, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of great though. I love yeah. this. Class A humor, bro. Class Classy. A humor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I, I hear you. Like when you're talking about that progression of starting with like drawing a nose and whiskers yes. on a cup, your first series could be just that. Yes. Like you could make five different cups with the nose and the whiskers and each one is a different glaze color, 100%. right? Yeah. Like that could be your first thing. But like what you're talking about in terms of layering techniques and building upon those techniques, mm. that feels like, like that is full on when you're beginning to like create a bit of like a brand for yourself and creating a, a, a like not just a series but like a full-blown body of work which yes. i which i like and the yeah. cool thing is that once you do that one thing for that one exact expression you want to do you just move on to the next thing right so for example with me and glazes mm -hmm. i really wanted to make a face separation glaze i recently yeah. made it i have no idea what that means uh face, <laughs> face separation you know when you when you know when you glaze something yeah the glazes usually combine yeah and they become like a new glaze right yeah, yeah face yeah. separation is they developed at the same time on the same clay body. Okay. And they both came out. They didn't really combine. That's all it is. Okay. 
there are two glazes that separated. Okay. Like oil spot glazes are famous for being face separation glazes. Okay. Because you got the oil spots, you got one glaze on top of another glaze. Oh, okay. And okay. they still both developed in the same glaze matrix, but they didn't combine. They didn't become a new glaze. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I understand. I still kind of don't understand. Yeah, I, I mostly understand. They keep the uh, whenever I listen to the Matt Cats thing, they like do all these technical terms, and I'm like, I feel like this is just you combine two glazes that didn't combine, but they both came out on the same glaze matrix, and you're just calling it face separation. I don't, I don't really even know what the glaze matrix is. It's just the glaze. It's the glaze. Okay. But matrix sounds cooler. It does sound cooler. It sounds right. It, it sounds, sounds super way cool. cooler. Glaze yeah. matrix. Yeah. Um, certo. <laughs> okay, anyway, carry on. But like, I really wanted to make a specific type of red. Not Tim Chrome, not Tin Chrome. Dude, your straw mans are just popping up like whack-a-mole. I hate- They're not there! I hate- <laughs> I hate Tin Chrome so oh much. Oh my god, okay, stay on- stay on point, stay on point. Violet okay. with extra steps. Cool, it's, okay, it's all right. Red. Carry on, <laughs> carry on, all right. So I made it uh, an iron red. <laughs> And I, I finally did it. Okay. Um, but like for me, that's very exact because getting a red in oxidation that's actually red from red iron oxide, very difficult. Yeah. Very difficult for me. Usually it requires a hold. Mm -hmm. But that for me took X amount of months. Mm -hmm. Like knowing how to make a glaze would be the general and then whittling it down and down and down and funneling it into the way I want to express myself with this particular color is the way that I do the process that we're talking about today. Yeah. You know what? You were talking about a narrative mm. Uh, mm. and drawing things on your cups. You know who yeah. does that really well? Mm. Tim C. Yes. Tim C is the guy mm. that would be the perfect example for that situation. Yeah. Because like he just, it's just a cylinder mug. It's just a regular old mug. But then he like gives it some zhuzh. <laughs> he zhuzhs it up. <laughs> I don't even know if I could call it just a regular mug. I mean, they've got, they've no, got, it's good. they've got a, they've got a really great it's shape. It's just the shape is regular, yeah. but like the, like there's a narrative and there's a robot and yeah, he's got a whole kind of world behind his behind his pieces, which I didn't even know about he's until got like a post apocalyptic good thing going yeah, on with this. Yeah. Yeah, and I I'm in I'm into it. If you ever talk to Tim, I don't want to overstep because he always says like it's from it's from a word of mouth that mm -hmm. the story is told. And so whenever oh, you meet yeah. him he tells part of the story. Yeah. And I've met him like two or three times. <gasps> so I know part of the story. Oh my god. So now when I look at his mugs, my my eyes go, I know I know what's yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to most people they're like, it's a robot. <laughs> There's a little can robot. Yeah. That's part of what I find so interesting about when your work has a concept behind it. Yes. Because it's often like sometimes people will like because there's this you know again this whole idea where when you're looking at art and I'm going to consider ceramics art you know cause that's a whole other argument but I'm calling it art. In it the is situation. indeed an argument. It is an art. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you're looking at art you know there's the idea that like the viewer brings their own perspective to it right and that influences mm -hmm. like how people perceive the piece. Of course. And then there's the intent of the artist. Of yeah and then there's yeah. the intent of the artist yeah. So that's that's what's really what I find interesting and important about being able to talk about your art now if if it being ambiguous is part of the point like for tim's work mm -hmm. he doesn't have that story laid out like he, he shares it in like bits and pieces and that's that's part of the whole experience which is kind of neat because then they, that's like almost getting into like performance art it's episodic territory. for him yeah you yeah know, those tv shows that are like they, they don't have a consistency you could just watch them little bit by little bit like aquating hunger force or something like that yeah, yeah yeah that's that's the way tim's work is to me yeah yeah i probably have a bias in terms of pushing conceptual work mm -hmm. because I went to art school. I went I went to UC Santa Cruz, I got my degree in art, and that particular program was very focused on definitely more concepts rather than technique and process and and like the formal qualities. What do you mean by things. conceptual like work that has a concept to it? Yeah. So it's like Were they not pro that or like uh, they were so okay, so so by conceptual work, yeah. I mean pieces that have a message or idea behind them that is not necessarily explicit in the piece itself. Got it. Okay. Or may be explicit, but like has varying degrees of like obviousness. Okay. Like for instance, the whole mushroom, this whole sci-fi mushroom, like that could just be a, because you like mushrooms and you like sci-fi and you're like, what if I combine these two? Right. And that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. That I would argue is less conceptual than let's say you're like, okay, mushrooms, sci-fi, okay, there's this really interesting perceived separation between what is natural, what is in the natural world, mm -hmm. and what is human-made, what is constructed, what is mechanical, what is machinery, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so by combining a mushroom, which is a, which kind of is a stand-in for the natural world, right. and let's just say 
uh, mechanical illustrations. I'm just going to go with an illustration yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by combining those two elements with the intention of exploring the relationship between the natural world and the human created world, hmm. I would say that is a concept. Okay. Like, and you and the artist might have a specific idea that they're trying to push. Like maybe they're trying to say that the power of human made construction things are so powerful that they are fundamentally changing the nature of nature. That's hot. Right? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like that could be the concept or it could be that, or, and this is, again, I'm, I'm thinking about different ways that you could approach yeah. this same, like this same illustration on a cup of a mushroom that has a sci-fi theme to it. Yeah. Like it could be that it could be the idea that like, oh, despite the perceived uh, separation between the natural world and the human created world, we can find a balance. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so those are all conceptual okay. elements to the mug, but someone looking at the mug is just going to see sci-fi mushroom or they're going to see a gotcha. mushroom with like some mechanical elements added on to it. There might be a deeper meaning to it. Right. There okay. might be. I gotcha. There might not. Yeah. So I think like part of what's interesting about approaching a series from a conceptual basis mm -hmm. is that you could have a really wide variety of manifestations of that concept. So like if you're going with the whole natural world versus human created world, you could have sci-fi mushroom, but you could also have you could also, I'm, I'm trying to think of something out. I'm trying to pull something out of my ass You're here. good. You can, um, you're fine. You've, okay. you've explained it. Okay. Yeah, I promise. You're okay. Good. You're I'm good. sorry. I got, on, I got on a train. You're I got fine. on a train. Okay. You don't have to, ex I, I feel like I asked what's conceptual art and you're like, ah! <laughs> No, like it's fine. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. It's I'm artwork sorry. with a story. It's artwork, yes. But what, I feel like. Whether it's from the artist yeah. or the viewer. Well, I want to. I want to be able to, I want to, the reason I want to explain it in such excruciating detail is because things like that are not always obvious to people. Yes. And I want to explain it to someone as, as though someone has not gone to art school and gone through all of the I, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'm sorry. Lindsay okay. has artwork school trauma though. I, I kind of do. No, I super appreciate it though, because again, like. Okay, no, I'll stop. You're good. I'll you're stop. fine. I'll stop. I just wanted to know whether the school you went to, was it like pro-conceptual work versus the skilled or? Yes, it was very pro-conceptual work. But they didn't teach you a lot of mechanical skills to, but like they didn't give you more tools on your belt to build the house. Physical ones. Um, they kind of did. Like we learned, you know, like, like I took, you know, I took like oil painting. I took sculpture. And so, you know, we learned how to work with different tools. Yeah. But it was more that the, the idea, the concept behind the piece was more important than, or I, it seemed to me that the concept behind the piece was more important than the craft kind of like, you still had to make stuff like the craft aspect of it was, it was still important, mm -hmm. but like, like, okay, I'll, for example, in my intro to sculpture class, mm -hmm. my, and this was intro, like first class, you are in college, you are a freshman and you are taking an intro to sculpture class. And the professor said I could not make anything that was representational. Meaning I could not make anything like I could not make a bust of like a human form. I could not make a dog. I could not make a cat. I could not make a Oh, I dog. love that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, dude. But no, I hate I. Mm. That's my biggest pet peeve with sculpture is that they only make things that represent other things. Oh, man. It's my biggest pet peeve. It was, a sculptor is like, I made a cat. How'd you do that? I was dude. looking at a picture of a cat. Oh my God. Okay. And then I tried to make it as dude. close as I could to no, the fucking cat. No, no, no. We, okay. So this oh. is a really good example of how we have had very different approaches, yeah. very different experiences of what we've been exposed to in terms of art. Yes. Because for me, like I was exposed almost exclusively to conceptual art. Really? Yeah. To the point where I like, it wasn't until I was a senior in, at Santa Cruz where I actually got to make the kind of art I wanted to make. Yeah. Because it was like, and, and uh, how do I say, it? like, okay, I'll put it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a friend who wanted to get their master's degree at UC Santa Cruz because they wanted to be a, a children's illustrative artist. Okay. Santa Cruz basically told her, we don't do illustration here. What do you, what do you? The implication is that. What do you mean illustration? Like you don't draw like what? The implication there is that illustration has to do with an industry. Like, oh, you're drawing illustrations for children's books. That's an industry. That's not art. Oh, so they sh they went in like, you're just going to try to make money off it. Yeah. And we, and want, and we, want, the, we want the concepts. We want capital A art. We don't want none of that yeah. regular Yeah, but also we're not. And again, I feel, I feel bad because I don't want to like, you know, no, no, no. Uh, no, I'm okay. I know we're totally like. And a, use it for your garden oh to my grow God. your plants. 
I have, I have, and honestly, anyone who has either been on my Patreon or like, you know, I've talked about this before, how it's like, I do, I have a bit of a chip on my shoulder about yeah. how Santa Cruz, you know, did not, does not prepare its students. Maybe that's changed since I've been there, yeah. but it does not prepare you for life after graduation. It, it tells you, I feel like the program really like, I know how to talk about my art yes. because of UC Santa Cruz. Of I know how to introduce concepts into my work, and I think my work is better because of my time at UC Santa Cruz. Yeah. However, the program does not have a focus on how to actually help you survive after you have graduated, and that's my biggest beef, is that they there seems to be that kind of classic, it's not odd, it's a, it's a oh, craft, yeah. and, like, that's what was annoying. So, like, you could not, like, if you wanted to go to... UC Santa Cruz and get really good at double humped gourds, they'd be like, no. That's wild. Right? Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So anyway, so, but that's, that's a long answer to a short question no, that's there, a bro. I think that's a perfect example of what we're talking about today on the pod. I feel, I think you think that was a tangent. It wasn't. Okay. That's a perfect example. Okay. Tell me because how, because I don't. <laughs> no, because what, realistically what I'm talking about is the craft. Like the way I was taught was I was taught to execute a form. Yeah. And then those were the tools on my belt that I was given to build the house. And yeah. the house that I built was the ability to express myself in the artistic world. Mm -hmm. I've met so many people that are the product of exactly what you're talking about. And it confuses me because mm. now it seems to me that they are classically trained, I guess, concept artists. Yeah, As yeah. For, I'm classically trained like craft artists. Like right. I craft first, I conceptualize after the craft. Yeah. Or rather, if I want to make something, I craft quality work. Not saying that you can't craft quality work if you're a conceptual artist. Yeah. But the amount of artists that I've met that come from a call an art college, mm. and they like, and this is gonna make you mad. This is gonna make me <laughs> like the quality of your work is. Just like, oh my God. your walls are super thick and thin in certain places. You're like, you didn't sculpt. It took you like a thousand well, years to make the well, thing. Well, that's because they're not taught. Like, that's they're not they're, taught. Yeah, I mean, like, I, honestly, I was that way. Like, so, okay, so when I came back from UC Santa Cruz and I went to Sac City yeah. to start learning how to wheel throw, my mugs were awful. Right. Like, awful. And then the hardest thing was, like, because, again, I came from a sculptural concept background mm -hmm. and I wanted, like, I wanted to make creatures that had a concept behind them. Yes. Just because they were representative doesn't mean that they didn't have, like I wasn't interested in making quote unquote just fantasy creatures, right? Like my creatures have a story and a message behind them. Right. I didn't know how to wheel throw. And last little, last little thing. Oh, I'm, I'm listening, just, like, I'm here for it. Up. Yeah, is like, so the hardest thing for me to figure out was mm -hmm. when I was like, okay, I want to get better at wheel throwing. Yes. I had no idea how to decorate my work because I was like, I don't know, like I they come- They do any techniques. No, but that's the thing. I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to make something that I was actually interested in. I knew how to do sgraffito. I knew how to do these techniques, but I was like, nothing I make is interesting to me. How do I make something that is interesting to me because I come from this sculptural background? And that's how I eventually, like, again, you know, I, I start, like, I think the first, the first series that I remember making that I was like, this feels like the beginning of something new mm -hmm. is when I made a series of small cups that had different types of horns for the handle. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was like, oh, okay, this is how I can start combining my sculptural concept brain yes. with wheel throwing. Mm -hmm. But it took a really long time to then figure out like, okay, from there, how do I want to make a mug that feels like a Lindsay mug. How are you gonna execute that? Yeah, how am I gonna, yeah, and, and I, it's like, it was, I had a total lack of ideas. And what I ended That's up- That's wild. Yeah, well, cause again, I came from this totally other background. So I had to, I bought a book, there's this book I still have called, you know, Surface Design for Ceramics. And I yeah. bought that because I was like, okay, how do I, you know, like, how do I, how do I be, how do I do the things, you know? Cause what I was seeing at, or what I was seeing around me, I feel like I still need, like, like again, I needed more tools in the tool belt. Yes. So that beginning to see how other artists started to do it helped me figure it out. And then I think the first mugs that felt like they were like me, me mm -hmm. was when I started doing the whole stat mugs. So when I came up yeah. with a design that was, okay, this references, it's conceptual kind of, because it references like I mean, a video game, yeah. like in that kind of thing. But it's your experience. Yeah. D &D. Yeah. And then anyway, so long story short, what I'm trying to say is that it's okay if you feel like you have a lack of ideas right now in terms of like how to make a mug that feels like yours, yes. but continue to explore things. And the biggest things that I would say, the biggest piece of advice that I would recommend is first of all, well, two, two things. First of all, 
look at other artists, look at other artists work, a wide variety of other artists work, not just ceramic artists, like other artists as well. And then combine things. Like for me, oh, yeah, combine I think my most interesting pieces are where I've combined either concepts or like techniques. And I think like concepts again for me is, is like a big one, yeah. like sci-fi mushrooms. <laughs> Back to the I rest my peace. <laughs> oh my god. No, I think that I think that's good because I have the opposite problem where you have a lot of concepts. Yeah. And the execution was difficult for you at first. Mm -hmm. I have so many tools on my belt that I have a tool shed. So when I have books that give me ideas, mm -hmm. I oh, I open the I open the book and go, oh, I forgot I could do that. <laughs> I don't look at, I no longer look at a technique and go like, how is that done? Unless it's yeah, really rare. Yeah. At this point, I look at a book of techniques and I go, I forgot I know how to do like most of this. Yeah. I just stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, do you ever feel like like you want more of a conceptual thing, or is it because because it didn't I really mean, ever seem like that was your focus? No, I have I have I have conceptual work. They don't really have a story. They're more of making. So like in the art world, at least there's difference. <laughs> and at least I'm just like no, I'm just thinking like oh boy, Dante's about to say a broad statement about, about broad the statement, art yeah. world. Okay. Well, this is what I was actually taught in art class, okay, right? Okay, there, yeah, there's yeah. usually different ways art can be used in society, and it can be hiding secrets, it could be telling a story, mm. it could be a social piece. A social piece is something that my teacher called like. I really wanted to make a sculpture with a hood on it with a bunch of bullet holes in it called oh, Trayvon yeah. out of black clay yeah, just to yeah, make yeah. a social statement. Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. like that, you can... And that's, that's I would say, a highly conceptual piece. Highly yeah. conceptual piece, right. Yeah. And there's, of course, the regular one that we all do is making regular items, like everyday items, beautiful. It's mm -hmm. the most like standard thing that most of us do. Yeah, I can right? say, because we make mugs that are... Or it's more attractive than mugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and I don't want to be pigeonholed into that that one thing. As sooner mm -hmm. or later, I want to make social pieces. I want to make conceptual art. Yeah. My issue is that I always feel as though I don't have enough tools on my belt to build the perfect house. So uh, whenever I have, I have like a really nice piece. It's like a foot and a half tall. Yeah. Has a crystal on top. Mm -hmm. It's really thin, really nice, very fragile. And I finally, after two years, mm -hmm. developed a glaze that I'm like, I think I could put a glaze on that. Oh. It's just been on, you know, and so I have work. Yeah. The other issue for me, personally, is that I don't have anywhere to put the work unless I want to give it to an auction. Mm. There's no art uh, studios that are coming up to me and going, hey, we would like you in our in our art show. Yeah, I have and to that's... struggle. Like, Instagram gives me more exposure than the freaking art store down the street does, which is yeah. sad. I mean, in some ways, that's, I mean, that's great in a lot of ways, though, because, yeah. again, like, for so long galleries have been the arbiters of what becomes like they've been they've been what the gatekeepers is, yeah yeah literally and I, yeah but i mean but there there are some advantages though like if you did you know if you have these larger pieces like have you have you tried selling them on like i mean i don't know i guess hmm okay i, I guess to, I hear, but they're fragile yeah so the issue is that like i have like i have one and a lot of them are sculpture i have pots that i sculpt on top of the pots i alter the form mm -hmm. and then i'm always like i could probably sell that for like 300 on my website somebody would Bro, buy that. you have to sell for way more than that i, I gotta get out of my studio <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful but like i need it out so i can create more better stuff i i feel that i feel it's, that and it's but i'm also like oh i can't really like if that bumps it breaks I mean, but the, I guess that's where you'd have to you'd have to figure out how to ship it. Yeah. Or have it be like somebody's gonna come and pick it up. In and, multiple boxes. Yeah. I, I mean, just, I'm not a fan of art galleries at this point. I don't know. That's mm, a whole. That's a whole. We got. Yeah, I was gonna say we got it. We should. We should actually have somebody on to talk about that because I think that'd be really interesting. Because in order to survive, I mean, yeah, in order to survive, they have to take a cut. But like, I don't want to give them a cut for what I could easily do on Facebook. Like, nah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, that's a whole different subject. That's a whole different subject. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I do have conceptual work, and I do have sculpts. Like, I sculpted. Uh, uh, I slab sculpted something last week. It's like mm -hmm. it looks like a bat from Star Trek, and it's on top okay. of a big pot that I threw, and I put holes in it, and it's supposed to be a uh, nice. So <laughs> <laughs> there's no real real concept to it. It's just a sculpture on top of a pot, uh, and I was like, this is nice. And then I was like, that would break if I put it in the mail. Mm. That would immediately break. No way. I'll have to send it in two separate boxes. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. But I made it because I was like, I have this new glaze. It's red. It's pure red. It's made mm -hmm. of iron. I'm going to put it on this brown pot. It's going to be so red. It's going to be so hot. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, no, no one's going to buy this. <laughs> it's huge yeah. and expensive. No. I would say, though, especially, like, again, a little message to the listener here, but, like, I... I think if you're interested in exploring something, that's where you go wide. Yes. But I think the going wide is important. And I think it's important to like, like, because again, even though you've been, you know, of most of the work that you sell is like mugs and things like that. Like, I think y for you, you've always said that like not getting 
cornered into doing just one thing has always been really important for you. Yeah. And again, bringing in like Kurt Hammerly, he has his slip cast mugs that he does, but he also explores other things. So it's like you can step back and forth between going wide and going deep. And I think that especially if you're feeling like your creative juices are drying up, consider whether you need to go wide or go deep again. TLDR, experiment. Yeah. And when you experiment with how you want to express yourself with a certain shape or a certain tool, as it were, on your belt, you need to get really good at using that tool, and that's how you express yourself better. Yeah. In summary. In summation. In summation. Making a body of work is important because it allows you to push beyond your comfort zone in terms of specific techniques and it gives you a chance to explore the beginnings of your own personal brand or your own personal like what what is a mug that feels like it is yours and i think developing a series helps you do that there's a few different ways that you can approach that you can approach a series by focusing on the formal qualities like again we talked about last episode where you're thinking about the shape the size the handle etc etc mm -hmm. you can focus on the technique or the process like carving or scraffito or combining different techniques and again as you're doing that go through several different iterations like sketch out five to six ways that you can explore that topic and same thing with the last way that you can approach it, which is the conceptual basis, which is the ideas behind the physical thing that you are making. That's that. It's a, it's, a hard, it's a hard sell because at the same time, I know there's plenty of you who are really good at one thing, much like many of us are, and that's the way you've chosen to express yourself. But the message I'm trying to send in a broad sense is don't be afraid to experiment as well, mm -hmm. to find new ways to express yourself and to put new tools on the belt, as it were, to build... And I'm not saying your house is bad. I'm just saying to build a better house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I get very frustrated whenever I see, especially ceramic, I want to say beginners, in their first couple of years who figure out they're really good at doing one thing and they do that one thing forever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you built a nice house with that one thing, but your house could be so much better if you just experimented a little bit. Mm. If you just like... Like, you know, the Dirty Potter Challenge number four just came out. I made a video oh, about yeah, it. Yeah. I finally put one out. Hell yeah. And I asked people... I said, go in your environment. You know, I want a bowl. I want a set of ramen bowls. I want you to go out into your environment, mm. push things against your clay, sculpt some stuff. I want texture from your environment. And mm. they've all failed me. Ah. Every one of them have failed me. Oh my God. They all just made regular bowls. Okay. Or they didn't find any texture in their environment. Like, oh. you know how much texture is on the bottom of your shoe? So much texture. So, you know, your tires... The fan in the corner of your room mm -hmm. has so much, has so much like spread texture. The glaze looks beautiful in. Oh yeah. But like, one person got a rock, like a really nice rock, and mm -hmm. that that's probably the best one I've seen so far. Mm, okay. But like, I want out there. Like, I want people to experiment and get out of their shell. And it's so frustrating for me to see that <laughs> people like, people are like, I'm gonna be different, and they. Space Dante. It, take, it takes, I think what's... I'm so what, disappointed! I think what's challenging is that when we... The chair, when, when we, that when, chair right there would make I, great texture. I, I, I that know. bike over there? Dante, I know. The grill on the yep. barbecue over there? Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. fence is good over there? It's the thing is when we first start, when like when we first start thinking about trying a thing, most of the time I would say that the thing that we think of first is going to be the thing that everybody thinks of first. Yeah, and I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and that but that's okay because sometimes sometimes I think it takes doing that to then realize, "Oh, I want to push this further because everybody else also does the same thing. I hope they don't say it and they're like, I'm done. I think it takes going through the process. And that's, that's again, I think part of the reason why I also suggest like sketching out a few different ideas, like even like 10. Think about 10 different, like if you're focusing on texture, right? Like think about 10 different objects that you could use to create texture because somebody might think of like a rock first. Marbles right. even. Marbles, yeah. Literally anything. Marbles, so it's like anything. Yeah. So I think I think it's okay. Like I guess what I would say is that I think creating a series will help push people the way that you're talking about experimenting. Like yeah. I think like like creating a series is kind of about going deep, but it also <laughs> to stretch this metaphor too too far, it also sort of helps you go wide. Because <laughs> if you're 
<laughs> if you're if you're trying something new that's going wide and then you're pushing that as far as you can you have to experiment you have to experiment yeah. yeah yeah and i think i'm one, just so one frustrated la one last example i'll give one yeah. last example i'll give is like okay so i read a book on uh like creature design like cre concept and creature design character and creature design and this uh, artist talked about, okay, how do you how do you push a concept until it breaks? And the example he gave was like, how do you Break like the if, game. if you're gonna make like an undead knight, what's the most simple form? Okay, and then take those same elements and push it farther. So like for instance, if you were if you're doing exploring texture with a rock, what if you you're like your starting point could be like pushing that rock into the side of the bowl, and then okay, what if you did a, a row, a vertical row of those same indentations. Mm -hmm. And then what if you threw the rock at the bowl? Yes. Like, you know, so, yes, so, please. so keep pushing it, keep experimenting. And I think that sounds like that's the sense of frustration is like you're wanting people to push things. I want, yeah, I really want, and like, I don't know. I just, I feel so. <sighs> he wants you to move it, move it. I would even take a bowl that you would just like score and slip texture onto. Like, not a single person has rolled out a slab of clay gotten it and pushed it against the bark of a tree cut it and then put that on the bowl with scoring and slipping that would have been fantastic yeah and it's just a tree those are free <laughs> my guy they're outside yeah well i mean i think that's that's part of the thing we're doing here is we're trying to it may seem obvious to us because we've been in this world forever dude but like if you're if you have never explored this how are people gonna know <laughs> how, how are people gonna know to think about that and that i think is part of our job is like if we are helping people explore things, I think it's okay to kind of hold their hand through part of the process because if you've never explored these ideas before, you're not really gonna know where to start. So if you tell someone pick texture, they may not know. I don't know. I mean, again, I don't know what people actually submitted, but I'm trying to I'm trying to leave some room. A disappointed father is what I am. Oh my God. You people. should have pulled out a slab, gone <laughs> oh to Costco, God. pushed the slab of clay into the employee's face and named the piece the minimum wage depression. And I would have been more impressed with these things that you guys are giving me right now. And that's it for today. Thank you for listening to The Mud Peddlers with Lindsay M. Dillon. And Dante of Earth Nation. Want to say hi and see what Dante and I are working on in our studios? Check out the show notes for links to our websites and social media below. You can find me at lindsaymdillon.com. That's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-M as in monster, D-I-L-L-O-N.com. And on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook at Lindsay M. Dillon. And you can find me at Earth Nation Ceramics. It's spelled exactly how you think it's spelled. But you can also find me on my Facebook fan page and Instagram at the same name at Earth Nation Ceramics. If you enjoyed hanging out with us today or you have a question or topic you'd like us to discuss, take a second to rate and review The Mud Peddlers in Apple Podcasts. It helps our podcast reach new listeners, and we really appreciate the feedback. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.